Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? Yes, my name is Kent and the channel is EOS San Diego. And I was pleasantly surprised this morning when I got up and saw my, my, my image in a, in a thumbnail for everything EOS. And uh, they had put up uh, a little bit of a call that we'd had, uh, well actually last week's call with the fireside chat. I'd made a comment and they had actually take the, taken that comment and put it in a video. So uh, uh, I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much to everything EOS for uh, using my uh, comment that I had in last week's call, last week's uh, Fireside Chat. Uh, so if you're interested in joining the Fireside Chat, it's every Wednesday at 12 a.m. Pacific Coast time, and it's on Discord. Uh, what you do is you just uh, get a Discord um, account, and then you just join the EOS, EOS uh, community. And of course, you'll see different things you can do with the EOS community. And one of the things you want to do is you want to uh, put notif open notifications and then just uh, uh, say that you're interested in the Fireside Chat. And that will get, get you on the Fireside Chat. And then of course, if you want to speak on the Fireside Chat, you have to have a mic. And of course, uh, join the chat that's ongoing while the Fireside Chat's going on. So you can see everything going on. But that's a great way to get involved with, with the OS if you're interested and you want to find out more and you're just wanting to, you know, check out the project that'd be a great place to start in my opinion uh, just like I did and of course they made they made uh, you know they made they made, they made my comment into a, a video for them so I appreciate that thank you very much for doing that I really thought that was fun uh, the other thing I want to say is that uh, um, well actually I'll just go back to the beginning of how I even started these videos um, I want to talk about that a little bit tonight because you know you get new people listening all the time and of course the way I started Yas yeah, San Diego was back uh, way a long time ago, probably 2014, 2015, and my oldest son Chase was interested in, in blockchain and he kept talking to me about blockchain. And I had no clue what he was talking about. I thought he was just talking about some something that was a fad and uh, was soon pass and I wasn't the least bit interested. Uh, until he showed me some of the gains that he had made in his recent trades. So when I saw that, I kind of got started getting a little bit interested. And that was way before EOS was even launched or even uh, had even decided to be launched. They weren't even, EOS hadn't even been around yet. It was Ethereum and Bitcoin. And of course, um, he had talked to me about this new project called EOS. And he was really interested in it. And he wanted to know if I sh he should trade his Ethereum for EOS. And at the time, EOS, e EOS was, was it's, it's, it's in there, was during their year long um, yeah, ICO. So he was wanting to know if he would trade his Ethereum for his EOS. And I said, I have no clue. But, you know, looks interesting. Uh, go ahead and, you know, do it. So he did. He traded some Ethereum for EOS, and it turned out to be a pretty good trade. And, of course, the reason he did that is because he was thinking about starting something on the, the blockchain. He wanted to do a project on the blockchain. So um, we both got interested in it. And the more I got interested in it, the more I started watching him, the more I started becoming interested in blockchain, and the more I started getting involved, and the more I, I enjoyed it. And... Um, and then, the, and then the chain launched. And of course, once the chain launched, uh, you know, it was more exciting. And I started doing these videos, but I saw that there was a void with EOS because I really felt like they didn't have good leadership. I mean, even though they, you know, they had a product and it was doing well and everything, I still thought that they didn't have a good spokesman. So I started making videos because I wanted to help the chain out. I wanted to help EOS out. I wanted to be part of the community. And the best way to do that is just to make a nightly video and talk about the chain. And that's what I did. I did that for a long time. For a couple of years, for a couple of years, I made videos almost every night. In fact, for, there was a long period of time, I think for over a year and a half, maybe two years, where I made a video every single night for EOS. And of course, during that period of time, we'd gone to the hackathon, we'd met Dan Larimer, and all this stuff. But it was always a little bit weird, you know, because you got like, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time with Dan Larimer that day. I, in fact, I, I put the video, I posted the video a bunch of times. You know, he talked to us, we talked to him. Uh, I told him I made nightly videos and of course we talked to him about the challenge application and uh, he was very interested in our project very nice very cordial and uh, I even talked to him I said look hey I do a YouTube video do you mind if I you know video us talking to you and he said no no problem you know go ahead and do it you know and then he wanted to know if he wanted to be in the hackathon actually become his participants so we told him we hadn't prepared for that but we we were talking to him about some of the 
other stuff with, with Challenge and he was looking at it and talking to us and stuff like that. And it was, you know, a really good event. I, and I, I, made, I met quite a few people on that event. Mark Pierce, Mike Novogratz, and did videos with all these people and everything like that. And then later on, um, when Dan Larimer starts doing interviews, you know, we, someone, we, would, we wouldn't want him to comment about our challenge application. Of course, obviously, we wanted him to mention us. And so we would, uh, when he would do an interview, we would, we would run challenges and ask people to ask him about the challenge application. And of course, during that period of time, he, would, he didn't even, he said, I never heard of these guys. I don't know who they are. Why, you know, why do I keep getting asked this question? I don't know, have any idea. And we always felt a little bit alienated from Block One and, uh, of course, Dan Larimer and, of course, the, the EOS blockchain. And you always kind of felt like, hey, I was doing these videos. Um, I was, we actually had hired somebody from Block One to do some work for us on the back end of our challenge application. And, and of course, we met Dan Larimer, we met Mike Novogratz, we met, and I have videos of all these people. If you go back and search my video, videos, I have videos of every single one of them. And uh, of course, Brock's always been really nice to me. Um, I've always felt like I had a pretty good relationship with Brock Pierce. He's, I followed him on Instagram. He's followed, I'm not Instagram, uh, Twitter. He's followed me back on Twitter. So I've always felt Brock was really cordial to me. I could never say anything like Brock Pierce wasn't nice to me because Brock Pierce has always been nice to me. So I, he's always been a good you know, person that I could talk to and he's always responded to my comments and stuff like that. So I don't have anything that negative to say about Brock Pierce. But it was just that there was always this little bit of unweirdness between us and the blockchain. And it always was a little bit, yeah, there was a communication, something that wasn't clicking with the communication. So um, I just kept on going. Of course, the EOS blockchain started becoming less valuable. Uh, people were, uh, the chain was going sideways and backwards. Uh, People were getting negative about it. Of course, uh, Block One was doing nothing with the community. And then I think they actually kind of felt like they didn't, they couldn't do anything with the community. It was almost like there was a, 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 some sort of roadblock between us and the community, between the community and, and EOS blockchain, or the Block One. So time went on and things just started getting weirder and weirder. And of course, block, then, then, then Dan Larimer left the blockchain. And then it really started getting sideways and going downhill and going backwards. and. Uh, there was no communication with Block One. They got, you know, kind of almost insulated from the community, and and then of course they got the waiver from the Security Exchange, and they, they, who knows what kind of agreements they made, or who they said they could or could not speak with. It was just this all got kind of really weird and flaky and kind of bizarre. And then one day, um, we we were at a point. I think they were going through problems with the resource model. We we were buying resources for our challenge application, and all of a sudden the resource model changed and we didn't know who to contact. And so I started going through everybody I knew and, you know, that had some technical understanding of the blockchain. And if I finally arrived, you know, I remember a long time ago that I talked to Stefan Bison and I wanted to know if those guys knew anything. So I called and he took my call and he spent a long time on the phone with me and encouraged us and told us, you know, we, you know, the things were happening and, and to be patient and, and, and stick with it and, and, and things should be okay. And he was absolutely right. And that's the genesis of that call I had when I mentioned Stefan Bison, was that he was the one that kind of encouraged us to keep going at a time where we didn't know, we didn't have the resources. Uh, it was hard to get the resources. The Rex was being changed. I can't remember all the details of that, but it was being changed. And so we were, we were struggling we needed some help and they were able to help us out. So. For that reason, we always felt indebted to EOS Nation and, of course, to uh, EOS Nation, which at that time included uh, 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 Eva LaRose and all the people there. So, um, you know, they kind of helped us get through that period of time. So um, that was the genesis of all that that went on in that, that call. So anyway, once the ENF took over and, of course, Eva LaRose and EOS Nation, uh, we were able to uh, get consensus of the blockchain and uh, get control of it, you know, so the community could get back in control of it. You know, things have changed. Now things are open. We can get on a call with them. We can talk to them. Um, it's just completely changed the, the, the whole attitude and complexion of the community. And uh, people are much more 
uh, willing are able to communicate with people and, and there's a lot more openness there's a lot more willingness to work with people now they have Pamela where you can actually you know get grants to help you with your, your project this was never happened back with block one block one was completely separated from the community now the community with the, with the ENF is 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 has a, has a voice and anybody anybody that wants to create a project and put it on the Pamela you get a grant there's only a few days left in the grant, so please remember to vote for us. We're Challenged Act, uh, EOS Nation, EOS Spanish. So, you know, things have changed. It's almost like I always think of uh, um, blockchain or cryptocurrency investing a little bit like being a police officer or a cop. It's like you go through a pe long periods of boredom and then have a little bit of an adrenaline rush. Something exciting happens. Like you may go all day and not have anything happen. And then five minutes before you're off your your, your your shift, somebody calls and somebody's being chased with a gun or somebody somebody had, somebody's doing something, there's a fight or something, you have to show up and it's a big adrenaline rush. That's the way the blockchain is. You go through years with sideways trading, backwards trading, things aren't going well. And then all of a sudden, man, it just breaks and you got wide pandemonium and everybody's wanting to buy and everybody's in and it's all, all, all you know, it just goes crazy. And we're due for one of those <laughs> adrenaline periods of time when, when you got an adrenaline rush where everybody's excited and things are going crazy. I think we're due for one of those very quickly. Uh, and uh, I think EOS is very, very much in, 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 in line for some, some, some good things to happen for. Because we've had a lot of things happen that haven't been so good. And so I think it's time for th the thing to start to turn around. For EOS to be a dollar, thirty dollar, forty right now is absolutely ridiculous for everything that's happened with this blockchain. So I'm looking for some gooder, better, gooder, better times ahead. I'm looking for things to uh, continue to, to get better. Uh, I can say I'm looking for some time, you know, like I say, 95% of the time it's boredom and backwards and sideward trading. 5% of the times it's just off, you know, off the, off, the, off the wall trading. I mean, you're just going crazy. People are just buying like crazy and you see stuff go from a nickel to $5. I mean, that's just the way it is. And speaking of a nickel to $5, also, I want to talk to you about the challenge application. Um, our challenge token, of course, is, is like all the other tokens here recently. It's been trading low because it, the market has not been good. So, you know, Bitcoin goes down, Ethereum goes down, EOS goes down. Of course, the challenge application goes down too. So, we, we have a, a way for you to buy the challenge application off our application, off our app. So, if you go to the challenge app, you can actually buy the token from the app. And if you would do that, that would help us out and we would appreciate it because it stimulates trading. The one thing I think we need to do with EOS is uh, we need to figure out a way for the tokens that are created from the EOS blockchain to have a trading platform, to have a place where you can buy the EOS, EOS tokens. So the projects that are built on EOS that create a token we need a trading platform for those. You know, that we did have that way a long time ago. Uh, yeah, and of course, Nudex, I think, still does. But we need more. We need more ability to trade the tokens on, on the blockchain. Because the Panamella grants are great. But what's really going to get this thing going is that the projects themselves are traded by, um, by exchanges. We need more exchanges trading the EOS blockchain tokens. And that's one thing I'd like to bring up uh, in, in, for the community to, to consider is a way to have a, an exchange, trade the EOS tokens. Um, that would really help the projects and I think would help the chain too. The other thing is that um, EOS has a waiver from the Security and Exchange Commission. One of the things that's gonna happen here in the very, very near future is you're gonna see more regulation for the tokens. I mean, just like me, I have a few tokens on Voyager. What happened to Voyager? Voyager went bankrupt. Guess what? My tokens got frozen. I don't get them anymore. So I, I'll doubt if I ever see any of that money again from Voyager, um, even though they're in bankruptcy court. But, you know, the lawyers usually get most of the money. And by the time they make settlements and everything like that, that money's usually gone. So um, you have people like Voyager that have gone out of business. A ton of other cryptocurrency exchanges have gone out of business. So people won't tolerate that. They don't want to lose their money and not have anybody be responsible for it. And just like with Voyager, who gets that money? You know, somebody else is going to get the money. I, you know, I didn't have a lot of money on Voyager, but I had some and I wish I had it back. I wish I had never put any money on Voyager. But, you know, 
the Security Exchange Commissions and the commissions that the, the regulators around the world are going to note, take notice of this, and they're going to start making some, some, some really hard decisions on what's a security and what's not a security, and they're going to start regulating that. Because uh, you know that these cryptocurrencies are becoming currency of the future. Uh, that's already pretty much been, been determined by you know, the people that are in charge. The, 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 the head of the Security and Exchange Commission likes cryptocurrencies. A lot of people in the government likes cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies, an open ledger, it's, it's going to have to take the place of the fiat currencies. The fiat currencies are just dated. It's almost like you know, they're, they're 30, 40 years behind times. Uh, the, 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 they don't do well in a digital world. Fiat currencies do not uh, uh, translate very well to the, to, the di to the digital world. Of course, we live on the internet. We live on a digital world. So cryptocurrencies are definitely going to be in the future, but they're not going to be in the future until there's some regulation. And that's going to happen here very soon. And EOS is in a perfect position to take advantage of that. They have a waiver. And of course, Ethereum's already, by Ginsler, has already been kind of given the, 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 the okay, and so has Bitcoin. So you know Bitcoin, EOS, and Ethereum are going to get the waivers from the United for Security Exchange. They're not going to be touched by them. The other ones are all going to be under that scrutiny, just like XRP was and like some of the others that they've, they're starting to go after. So yeah, they're going to go after these exchanges. They're going to go after these cryptocurrencies that are, are not our securities, and they're going to start taking them down, and they're going to start making them get regulated, or they're going to start punishing them. And of course, EOS can take advantage of that, and so can the projects that are on EOS, the projects that that have, um, you know, did airdrops like we did. We didn't raise any money from ICOs. Those projects will do well. So this is another reason why we think that the EOS uh, tokens are a, a good idea for uh, exchanges to, uh, to trade. Um, you know, and exchanges need inventory. And of course, the best way to get inventory is to use the tokens that they know they're never gonna have to suspend trading on. Just like uh, XRP, I think Coinbase was trading XRP until they got litigation. And then they had to suspend trading. So obviously these exchanges are gonna look at EOS as an opportunity to bring in tokens that they can trade, like Coinbase. I mean, Coinbase needs tokens. They gotta trade tokens. And as the, the market heats up and more and more people went into this market, they're gonna to have to give them opportunities to invest in different tokens. And that would be a perfect opportunity for them to take on, you know, something like the Challenge DAC or, you know, other projects that are trading on EOS. And that's what I hope that would happen because we need to, to be aware of, you know, we can build as much as we want to build. We can create as much as we want to create, but we always have to be mindful. A lot of people will judge EOS simply by price. And, it, you know, if we ignore that, then we're going to miss a lot of opportunity. So, um, you know, obviously trading EOS, uh, buying EOS, holding EOS, staking EOS, whatever you want to do, holding the challenge app, uh, staking it or buying it and all this other stuff. These are all things that are going to help the price and help the overall market and, and, and help people to, uh, you know, to want to hold it and, and, and own it and, and, and realize that the future of, of, of currencies and the future of the internet is the, deep, you know, the decentralized database, the uh, blockchain. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.